Hello, welcome to my workshop. My name is Andrew Malasi, and today I have an unboxing and first impressions video. Clearly, I've got the Wood River four and a half bench plane in front of me. And the long story short is that my local woodcraft is about an hour away from my house. And as I was traveling out of town, I happened to basically drive right by one and I hadn't been in one for a long time. So I just stopped in. And since I'd had my eye on one of these for a while and picked up some side work, here at my job, I had some extra money burning a hole in my pocket and pulled the trigger. This is a pretty typical thing uh, set up whenever you unbox it. It's going to come in this bag packed in the bubble wrap and it's really heavy. Specs are on it I think about six pounds but as soon as you take it out of that bag you'll notice that it's covered in this slimy oil. Rob Cosman's done a number of videos about it and he said just use uh, uh, paint thinner or mineral oil works or mineral spirits works really well to get it off so first thing you want to do clean it and then wax it or oil it right after that I love this. this is the chip breaker and as you can see it's not like the Stanley Bailey's where it's got that hump in the back of it it's actually uh, milled and in, into it and so you have a really nice mating surface of course though you can see the tool marks or the tooling on the front of it and the lever cap looks great too as you can see personally I like the keyhole look rather than the kidney bean look so I'm very happy with that and if you don't know already Wood River has basically gone out and copied the Stanley bedrock style so everything about this is more or less like a bedrock it's it's what everybody's doing these days now that instead of having the traditional screws that you tighten on the top it has these pins that are basically nuts and the screws are filed to a point and they're underneath the frog and then the point will engage that pin that has an uh, that sits through the frog and then it'll hold it down that way using like a clamping pressure you see the surface on that? I was extremely impressed with how smooth it was. It's basically mirror finish. At the side, yeah, you can see the, the tooling. The bottom where the frog and the bed of the plane meet is extremely flat as well. I just could not believe how nice this was. That big brass uh, adjustment knob turns really easily. And I think it has to do with just how big it is because it's got that mass. Once it gets going, it doesn't want to stop. Woodcraft is really proud of what, or Wood River, excuse me, is really proud of the fact that they put a bearing on the um, the lateral adjuster there, and I think it works. I don't know. I've not noticed much of a difference. It's stiffer than my old Stanley Bailey's are, and so I can really get the fine adjustment in there really well. There's a quick look at it. Everything came really, really flat. I, like I said, I was extremely impressed. And, I mean, to a certain degree, this is what you expect whenever you pay in the 170s for a tool. I think the handles are Babinga, but I'll double check on that. First thing I did was I took the iron and just uh, set it on my fine stone real quick just to get an idea of what the scratch pattern would look like. And you can see that it's not that flat. This was my first point of disappointment. However, the sole was very square from side to bottom, and I checked it on both sides. And front to back was relatively flat, and I don't think it shows up there, but I feel like I could have gotten a feeler gauge under there. I don't know what thickness. I saw a little bit of a gap. And so that was like my second little, there you can kind of see it, second little, you know, uh, point where I was like okay I wish it were a little better but even so having flattened it and gone ahead and cut some shavings that little bit of a hollow on the bottom I didn't feel like it merited me taking it to uh, a lapping stone or something these are literally some of my very first shavings I'm just trying to dial it in And first impressions are at this point are it's a plane. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't super impressed. I just loved pushing it because once you get it going, it goes great. I don't know if you've ever picked up and used a Stanley number eight, 
but those things just have so much mass they go forever and once you get it going it doesn't stop and this feels the same way it's so heavy i just love it right about here is where i started to try and back off the iron fine tune it and see just how thin i could take it this is where i actually got really impressed you can read straight through it especially well when you have high cron contrast backgrounds and letters of course but I could read straight through it I don't know if I could have measured this thing on a caliper probably but that's like I said where I started to feel really good about my purchase and I can't even tell you what this surface felt like when it was done but yeah I've never gotten a surface that nice before you see the sheen it just shined I just could not believe it I took it to some walnut I took it to some other wood I had lying around I took it on end grain walnut I just was impressed every which way I was impressed maybe like I said in my review of the Stanley sweetheart chisels that maybe because I paid a little bit of money for it I've got a placebo effect and it's making me think better than it is but I'm not sure I just really like it okay so what's the verdict Straight out of the box, I was just so impressed with the weight on it. When I picked it up in the store, that's one of the things that convinced me I would go ahead and pull the trigger. It's extremely heavy. It feels great in your hands. Everything is just really smooth to the touch. I love the finish. It's like a matte finish. I was really also impressed by the machining. I know that Rob Cosman has done a lot um, to work with the manufacturers of this, uh, of Wood River. I like the fact that it basically is a bedrock plane. It's got these uh, frog adjustment screw uh, down here instead of up top, which is what you'd see on the regular Bailey styles. I love the really massive brass um, adjuster knob here. This uh the the lateral adjustment is actually a piece of brass that has been uh screwed on i'm not sure if it's been epoxied or if it's or what else but it uh it might have but it's got two screws that hold it there so i think that could possibly be a point of failure but i actually like it it feels very solid the other thing is is that the the blade itself or the iron as well as the chip breaker they're both in a solid eighth of an inch thick and let me tell you that makes a huge difference uh, whenever you're planing it just cuts straight through the wood I've been using the regular old Bailey's pattern planes and they do great but they're they're thinner irons you can feel it a little bit more as they deflect or whatnot and this it is just it gives you those great shavings that you just saw straight off after a few minutes of honing uh, the blade it was giving me great shavings I've gotten better shavings with this in just a little bit of time with it than I've ever gotten any on any of my other planes and that could be uh, due to a number of factors the fit and finish on it is just extremely impressive I like how they went all brass with all these little details the other thing I have to mention now in in total honesty, since I'm giving you a first impression review out of this, I'm going to come out with a more in-depth look at this plane after a little while, way down the road. But I will say that as I, um, the after I did my unboxing and I took it out, I got it sharpened, I wasn't exactly satisfied with the flatness of the back of the blade. But I was willing to let it go because I tried, I figured I'd give Rob Cosman style of sharpening which he uses the uh, the ruler trick so it got me up and running really quick then then I went ahead and I waxed everything oiled it all up no oil uh, no rust no problems but the next morning when I came back I saw right about here on it I saw like a speck of paint and so I went like this and tried to remove it with my finger thought what what was that and it actually was a void in the casting that collapsed when I uh, when I picked it with my thing, my thumbnail, it was about a one millimeter in diameter hole that appeared when I did that. 
when I told the people at Woodcraft, my local Woodcraft, they were shocked. They said, that's really strange. Bring it in. We, we don't think you're lying to us. We believe you. But uh, that's rare. We don't see those kind of defects often. Like I said, I brought it in. They had no problem switching it out. So this is not the same plane that you saw me unbox. But it's basically, uh, there's nothing to, that I need to reshoot. However, that said, if on the first one I was a little annoyed at the flatness of the, 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 the iron or the blade on the back side, this one was ridiculously flat. I, didn't even, I don't even have a minute into this. Can you see the scratch pattern there? It's clearly been polished basically all the way up. Uh, it's been, it's got scratches almost over 95% of it. There's like a little spot here and here maybe that is not perfect. But I'm telling you, this was extremely flat. I was so surprised to see how flat it was. Then I put the back uh, bevel on it. Well, the slight back bevel. You can't even feel it with your hand because it's so small. And yeah. They mate perfectly. I just love this plane. So, first impressions, I would not hesitate to buy this again. Yes, if you've got the money, let's just be honest. You're going to want to probably buy something even more premium and like, let's say, the Veritas or the Lee Nielsen. And the reason why I went with this over, let's say, the Veritas, which I just don't really love the look of the Veritas. The design is a little bit, I don't know, it's a little too modern for me. I love the old timey look of this plane here. Then, so that leaves me with this or something else maybe, or the Lee Nielsen. And while some of the Lee Nielsen planes are extremely reasonable, I think the number 62 uh, bevel up uh, low angle jack plane is in the 240s. And if this is in the 170s, that's not that big of a difference in the end. But the four and a half, especially if you get the bronze body, you're in the mid threes. And I just couldn't swing that, especially since I got $20 off this because there was some random coupon going that day only. And so they price matched it from the website. There you go. That is it. My unboxing and first impressions of it. The sole is extremely flat. The back of the iron is so much flatter on the second one. Everything all over is just wonderful. I'm excited to get using it and I've already put it into to use as you can see here on the floor. These are all the shavings I've taken from it. Just uh, fiddling with it and also getting this ready for the nightstand that I'm making, the shaker nightstand. Thanks for watching this review. I hope it's been useful and enjoyable. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you around here for the next one.